are you thinking? What, what, what do you what, what do you want in this game? Uh, I want to, you know, uh, see how the lanes are going to go, first of all, because... Uh, uh, first of all, OG, you know, I thought they're gonna stay away from the Timber so after Amar left. But uh, yeah, uh, speaking of uh, some of the heroes that are played on Dire, Ursa usually played on Radiant. Uh, we have a quick video of VZM talking about Radiant versus Dire. Take a quick. I enjoy playing Radiant because the advantage is uh, if I should choose, I choose Dire because uh, you make stacks easier, you farm caps easier. BZM some words there as we see potentially first blood coming in with fairy fire, but a sight coming through from BZM to get that first blood taken out nine. So first blood and on the board first again here for OG, which is something we saw in the first game. And, uh, you know, OG did well. They had a tri lane. They were laning what seemed to be all right. Yeah, but is gave, also uh, dead. Too much space over, and they might be able to get Soxa too. 33 coming over, slight again. One more right click needed to get the kill, and it will be Taiga on this Elder Titan to get the kill on a Soxa as 33 claims the life of Misha. So it ends up, at least in that sense, being a trade with those two kills and uh, a couple of bounty runes being picked up across the board as well. Skitter, he grabs himself two, and OG will grab two as well. Uh, BZM off to a really good start. He uh, almost has his bottle on a mid lane. He got the first blood money, and he also has assist money, and also has a little bit more experience compared to Nine on a Tusk. This is the matchup I think we're going to see uh, quite a bit more. We've seen a decent amount of Tusk on mid played in the Chinese DPC. Uh, from what I've seen, they start with the Snowball. They use Snowball to secure the range creep and also like deal damage. It's pretty similar, but you also have like stun. Maybe you get uh, another right click in. Uh, Nine, he is the one that uh, kind of pioneered that Tusk on a mid lane. And uh, yeah, a lot of pressure here on the top lane with, uh, with the tri lane that OG is running. This is pretty similar to what Gaming Gladiators did in the throat of Tour 1, Tour 2 kind of stopped uh, during uh, Tour 3 with the tri lanes, with the aggressive tri lanes, and having Ace play the safe lane mostly on the Tidehunter, Timbersaw, Beastmaster, these type of heroes that can self sustain. Yeah, the tri lane, it, I mean, it got them six kills in the first game, so we'll see if it could do the same here in game number two. You've got Taiga and Misha just stepping forward and constantly just putting pressure on Skitter and Snake King. Making them feel a little bit uncomfortable while there's just free farm for the drow of Yuragi. So, for right now, that nah, sucks out this game. Right. He can have a relief. He was like, whew, man, this time around I'm not playing against the tri lane. Last game he was 0 5 and 0. A lot of uh, damage on this Timber, so who's only level 2, reactive armor level 1. Not as great. Pop that salve though and try to heal up at 33. 38.3 a second, that should just about do it, get you back to full if my math is correct, but, uh, you know, it, all right, uh, Ma the math close. checked out. That sucks, it was I kind of ruined it. He hit him once. Whirling death coming through in a Soxa, and that's just the back and forth that we're seeing at the moment between DM and Soxa, and like you said, yeah, he's feeling lucky that he doesn't have to be up against this tri lane at the moment. It was uh, it was rough life there for Soxa, but uh, he ended up really putting up a, a, a big fight towards the end of that game, and he was doing really well on that Rubik. As Snake King again hit with the bushwhack, Taiga in, Acorn shot, and they need two more right clicks as Taiga gets the finishing blow, takes out Snake King, three to one for OG, and a little bit of repeated history here for OG as they continue to get kills in this top. Skitter deeping bottom. He was sitting at uh, one CS. Uh, like you do rely on Ursa having a good game because Ursa does counter a decent amount of heroes on side of OG. But like when it comes down to Draw Ranger against the Ursa matchup. Oh, mid lane. Yeah, they've got nine and mid. here. This is an interesting <laughs> move from Tundra, but it looks like it's going to work out. Snowball from nine. He'll get the kill. They take out BZM and. Uh, oh my god. Uh, you definitely. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> You don't expect this to happen because what 33 wanted to do is not TP so that he has a TP rotation available for the bottom lane if they decide to move. So why not just get a kill if you're moving to the other side of the map? <laughs> that, uh, why not just get a kill? I guess it really does work that way and uh, 33 able to claim an assist on that one. So we'll see if they do rotate over, if they're going to continue to try and go to a tri lane at some point. Misha not with a lot of mana. And they've got the Brambles down, so Misha not 
really able to put on pressure of the Dark Will just yet. And how much does that kill help out? Like, nine, he gets helped by 33 to get a kill on a BZM. How much does that bolster his lane? He needed that little bit of extra XP because BZM was already like half a level ahead of him. He did have that extra gold. Taiga will TP out, knows that the fight is on cooldown. But uh, Tundra changing the lanes. They want to make sure that Ursa is getting some farm, sitting at in the middle of the pack on 10 CS right now. DM's going to be afraid of uh, these two heroes throughout the whole game, Ursa and Timbersaw. I think there was a game in China where Tidehunter dies to Tusk at like 60% HP with the Guardian Greaves. He gets punched to death. Uh, especially since you start to get more levels, uh, more points in the tag team, you get an extra hero. Like these heroes that were supposed to be tanky, they're definitely not as tanky. Yeah, that was uh, a ridiculous walrus punch we saw. I, I believe in the LGD series that it went that way and it, it was a gr gross amount of damage. Meanwhile, Top lane, 33 is up here, but they didn't make the rotation. They have DM making the swap with Yoragi. So Yoragi's now back towards bottom, and Skitter, he's got to wonder what he's going to do there. Is side of his searing chains, Ooh. and BZM now with a kill. That's over a solo mid. kill. Taiga was there to make sure with two points in natural spirit, but uh, kind of uncharacteristic mistake there from Tusk. He did have 10 magic stick charges. I guess he relied on using the snowball, but something that kind of ruins Tusk is the root mechanic. Misha, you can't use the snowball during the root. So a bit of a struggle there for Nine, right? And, uh, you know, coming back to the lane, we'll see if he can kind of settle down a little bit. He's sitting at 27 CS to the 33 and three of BZM as bottom lane bushwhack as well as a silence with Taiga making the rotation. The tri lane joins up again, and Soxa's gonna fall to your rock. It is, uh, Again, this tri lane just abusing Tundra. And the question I guess I have from game one coming into game two is can they parlay that into more? Because the lane, it went all right, but they left mid, they left safe lane when they were doing this tri lane in the last game, very open. Yeah, this time around, uh, Tundra does have also a hero that can easily rotate to the side lanes. Uh, both supports also want to take DM. a fight. Like top lane in some trouble. Snake King, he's. Got him stunned up for the Ooh. moment. Just one more right click needed. DM on the run now, and maybe they'll look for the sleep, but they get Snake King with the final blow on DM. Just barely is. Nine shard snowball to farm up a little bit over mid. 33, teeping back to bottom lane. It's musical lanes, that's for sure. He's level four. You would definitely love Broodmother to be slightly higher level, but the lane is pushing in, so he's gonna collect some extra XP on the bottom. Has mana boots. Frostbite action on Taiga, but he, he already got his courier. He's happy. Get that kill, get some gold for the team, and be on your merry way. Misha back up here again. So the three heroes combine once more, and it seems to just be always a kill for them. As Yoragi's got himself another one, and this is pretty much a uh, copy paste start for Yoragi in the laning phase to uh, game number one. And the right click's on a skitter. He is just forced to go all the way under the tower and not really have a response to this. He's all by himself. There's actually now four heroes here for OG top. Squad lane. They want to kill Skitter. He's still level five, no points in end rage. If they decide to dive, Skitter's definitely dead here. Remnant over Bushwhack lands and now certainly another one for Yoragi on the killing spree. And Tundra. They need to find a way out of this chokehold top because right now it is just kill after kill in that lane. And uh, nine, yeah, he's farming here mid, but is that enough? Is that the same as getting that DK, that farm early on? He's getting levels a bit uh, low on mana. Rune spawning in five seconds. We see supports rotating. They want to secure a rune. It's going to be top arcane rune for Ember Spirit. Most likely Saxa. So he's gonna drop chains and a bushwhack pull in. Misha's got a kill there. Is he's one one in six, involved in seven of the eight already. So eight minutes into the game, OG with one K lead, and it is a questionable start here for Tundra. Wondering what they can do to really start to put it back in their own favor. As uh, you know, mid again, snowball to BZM. But Searing Chains, Taiga, Stomp, Sweep. And a TP from Snake King with a Frostbite out on a Taiga. Nine will right click 
away, but there's a lot of damage going on to the Snake King, and they'll get the kill there onto the Crystal Maiden. They end up trading Taiga. EZM will retreat, throw a remnant down, TP back to base, go back to full health, full mana, and be ready to go once again. And it's an early advantage for OG in the esportsbet.io odds. Uh, you know, they're favoring Tundra by a lot, so when you see OG in the lead, it's uh, well, maybe something that the odds weren't expecting. Yeah, not expecting considering uh, how well they played, uh, not just during TI, but also in game one, they did manage to stabilize the lane. Like, you can see OG making all the moves, they are getting the kills, but in terms of net worth, it's less than a 1k gold lead, so Tundra still finding the good amount of farm on all of their heroes. The one hero that uh, is kind of in the middle of the pack, but uh, is known to be a lane dominator is this Timbersaw, because he did swap uh, multiple times. He's, oh, he's gonna get it. <laughs> on the, right on the end of that TP. Ooh, a little broom handle there, too. I'm always impressed by 33's uh, br brood, uh mother. We're like, I, I used to see old 11. Oh, you could have just said I'm always region. impressed by oh, 33 I mean, yeah, you know what I'm dot, and the, okay. you would not be wrong. I'll end the sentence there. Always impressed by 33. Period. Meanwhile, silence on a nine, and nine is uh, well, gonna get the snowball off. This might just extend the inevitable, and that is his death. BZM getting credit for that one. Socks are running away from BZM as well, as there is a brood over and nearby, but nothing 33 could do, so he'll go back into the jungle and farm. Yeah, on the side of OG, we see they are the ones controlling all the power runes pretty much. 33 did pick up double damage, but not the most valuable one. This is not double damage on Tusk, nor Ember Spirit. He took it so that Ember doesn't get it. Uh, this top lane, they have Ward behind the tower. They also have Catapult. Yuragi has been very active on Drow Ranger, moving from lane to lane. He was just mid, he was bottom, he's top. He did manage to kill Ursa as well, but still gonna respect potential rotations coming out from Tundra's members. Right now, they are Moving towards the mid lane, definitely a tough kill to get. They're still searching inside the trees and staying elusive for the moment, but ends up getting slapped. 33 will make the rotation towards top and kind of halt this push that was coming yeah. in out of the tier Usually one tower. Usually we see this move from Brood when she takes the tier one tower on the bottom to DP and maybe the like join or she wants to dominate the bottom part of the map, but uh, 33, he understands that, that he needs to help his team out. Morris Punch, Bedlam right on top of Misha, and that is that single target damage that comes in from the Bedlam. I remember back when Dark Will was just released, that damage was absolutely insane on a solo target. I believe it was like 900. And they're still looking to get a return here on Soxa, slight again from BZM. So a dominating spree for the Ember. He was thinking about TPing out, but the good stun coming out from Taiga. Make sure that they get this kill. And another good stomp on a mid lane. Let's see what they can get out of this. Nine. Shards and the snowball back towards the tower. So mainly just survivability there is the... Yeah, Invisrune will be bottled up, immediately activated. Side of his Searing Chains on a Snake King. The rundown is there. BZM now mega kill streak. He is just stacking up the kills. And on the run is Misha. Bushwhack lands, Bedlam again, solo target, and the Shadow Realm Strike won't be enough to get the kill, but now they're going to focus their attention over Snowball on connect. to the Timber. So DM on the run, and not because he wants to, but because Big he's geared up with the on Terror three. Eye. Stomp on a three, the sleep is there. Taiga doesn't exactly have the damage to get the kill on any of these heroes with DM retreating, but it is a save nonetheless on this Timber. They needed like two, three extra hits coming up from Ursa, this Vanguard build on DM. Keeping him alive. Walrus Punch. And looking for the sleep, but that's not going to happen. Nine. He'll get credit for that one as there's a little bit of help there again from the Dark Willow. One big issue for Tundra is going to be BZM on this Ember Spirit. He is getting uh, out of control. Uh, he's the one who can go to Broodmother's Lane with the Maelstrom about to be finished, just 100 gold away. And they don't have that much lockdown on side of Tundra. They need to use Bramble Maze, a snowball. You need to execute perfectly. They have root mechanics, but uh, might be a bit uh, difficult getting on top of Ember Spirit. Especially the way Taiga has been playing on Elder Titan. Always there at the right spot, using that Echo Stomp to stop any kind of aggression. Saving DM, then setting up the kills, and also saving BZM on a mid lane. 
Yeah, we had a, a little bit of a chat about this hero. I think before we even got started with the DPC, we were talking about Elder Titan and how strong he can be in the right hands. And it's kind of showing that now. And I, I know that OG don't exactly have the lead at the moment in terms of net worth, but there's certainly a point here where OG, with this Maelstrom especially, can uh, start to get into disgusting territories of taking over. Quite get that kill on a nine. Nine has double damage in bottle. Let's see if they decide to smoke, and they will. Uh, this got uh, caught by Ember Spirit. Yeah, so immediately the smoke is going to cause OG to group up in their own jungle. Make sure if they do come over, they have some answer to this. I like that Nine is going for Deso straight away. He understands that they might lack some damage, considering that Broodmother is more of a utility hero than the damage dealing hero. So going into Deso as a first go over. Oh, good silence. Ball. And the silence comes out, so this is trouble for Nine. Nine trying to stay alive. A Snake King goes into the ult. They get the kill on Amisha. They'll look over. A skitter goes on our Yuragi. Down goes Nine. BZM with the slide to get that kill. And now Yuragi falls to Sakza. They finish off Soxa again as BZM with a double kill, slide over to the side, and, well, it's a trade two for two, losing nine, losing Yuragi. Who does this benefit the most, according to the fight recap? Just a little bit for OG in terms of gold, but a little bit more experience for Tundra. This was a fight where 33 was still farming the top. He's ready to join once the Guardian Greaves is up, so overall still a good trade for Tundra. Once you have that Guardian Greaves, you are going to be able to keep your allies alive but nicely placed silence as i said by yuragi not allowing uh, this task with the double damage to get any any damage that he was not able to punch people with it but ursa most importantly did finish off his battle fury and now he's ready to farm some ancients there is a stack of ancients uh, that he's uh, looking for snaking probably gonna stack that one more time but i've been really impressed i already said during game one the way skeeter's been playing and he recovered real nicely he's uh, up there, not as farmed as Ember or uh, Drow Ranger, but uh, getting there. With the Battle Fury, he needs like two minutes to be on the top of the network. Yeah, it feels very similar to game number one, right? Yeah. One one thing to notice about uh, Dyer on Ursa, the Ursa on Dyer, is that uh, he doesn't threaten Roshan as good as Radiant's Radiant One would. Because the map... Oh, hold that thought. Yeah, Walrus Punch on a BZM, but the Bushwhack comes out from Misha, setting up that Sharpshooter. Now the Snowball over. They're trying to catch him, but stays in the slight, the sleep coming through. But now Yuragi over and looking for Soxa. They get about terrorized to throw at these heroes as the Earth's Twitter Another comes in Taiga. A slight move forward from BZM, and they are going to get the kill on the Snake King. Now they'll look over the rest. Snowball hits out of Taiga, the Walrus Punch to get the kill. Soxa, he's got credit for that as nine falls to BZM. BZM's been able to take advantage of these low heroes and using these slights to get a couple of these kills in fights again and again and again. And well, he's Ooh, done it one more time in this one. Yeah, there was a, there was a one single tree there in the triangle that uh, maybe he could have used Bushwhack too, but uh, missed in the end. Still 2k gold lead for Tundra, even after all these losses. You see Skeeter farming the triangle. He farmed that stack that I mentioned. But uh, in terms of who's winning these fights, for now it's OG. And I like the itemization. BZM going for Yule Scepter to remove this uh, annoying stun, the root mechanics, and also the best kiting item against Ursa. That's why Taiga's going for one as well. Yeah, just trying to kite the Ursa as much as they can because Skitter, when he gets his hands on you at the moment, you are pretty much dead on your screen already. He's going to move up towards Sop using this Battle Fury that he got a couple of minutes ago for the BKB. And the farm is starting to get up there where he's getting close to taking over the top spot from BZM. And next big timing for Tundra will be BKB on Ursa, Deso on Tusk. This is where they try to take a kill and potentially get a Roche, but let's see how they approach. Maybe they even go inside the Roche bit because Ursa can jump in a little bit low on mana, has two mangoes to work with. Still, this constant threat of Ursa taking Roche on, you, need, you know that you need to play the top part of the map. Kind of forces you in a position that Tundra are going to be aware of, right? Like, if you have the threat of Ursa going into Roche, you understand that OG need to be nearby. Maybe you can smoke up, get a pick off or two, and then just take it easily. Yeah, definitely. Uh, looking at the items, you did mention Hex that we've seen in the Chinese DPC region getting built quite often on the offlaners and built often quickly. 
33. He understands that we need to control this Ember Spirit somehow. He sees that, you know, maybe Orchid would be an option, but uh, considering that he has a Yule Scepter and usually builds into BKB as his item, they need something different. So Hex, he's going to commit to it. So it, it will be uh, Guardian Greaves right into that Hex, too. So we'll see how quickly 33 gets his hands onto the Hex and how much uh, Tundra going to do once they pick up this item. So you can see 33, his positioning in terms of farming. He's aggressive on the other side of the river. He's been all over the place getting as much farm as he can. And he's right behind this Ursa with a Battle Fury. So he, you can see just GPM-wise how fast it is. And yeah, it's right on your screen right there. So I mean, it is looking pretty when your numbers are towards the top, that's for sure. Tundra definitely wants to take a fight. Uh, DD available on Tusk, about to hit that level 12. So. Five less seconds on Volrus Punch. He probably gets it off in the fight two times. Snaking. Uh, trying to get that ult off. That freezing field's not going to last too long with the Yules in the hands of BZM. Sharpshooter and a slight just a little bit too late. And that's why he's a king. Three heroes, almost four hero rotation for him. He does manage to get out of trouble. And never in doubt either. And Dyer's top tower. BKB, and they're not going to sync up this double damage on Tusk because it did expire. You would have loved to take a fight. Uh, Ursa has his BKB, needs to use the courier. This is go time for Tundra. Again, like you said, this is going to be go time near Roche. So yeah, it's, it's going to be, sm to it's gonna be smoke over. and try to play the top part of the yeah. map. Let's see how where OG are going to be for this, too, because, you know, they're set up near Roche. They've got a couple of heroes over in the mid lane. You've been showing DM for the past few minutes over mid. If they could catch Tundra coming their way, maybe they could fight this, but there's the Bramble Maze laid down. The Curse Crown on Amisha. Lotus Orb, Sharpshooter going the other way. That Lotus Orb placed on him by DM. They've got spiders over to the side that cleaned up immediately into the Shadow Realm is this Dark Willow, so leaving the, the fight for the moment. They don't have the best initiation. Tusk trying to get his Blink Dagger. Still no BKB. I love the build. Sometimes you need to risk it. Counter Smoke from OG running inside the enemy base. If they get the stun off, if they get the Bushwhack. Son of Searing Chains and going after this Dark Willow and dies in the Shadow Realm, so. I got Ping Roche immediately. 33 scouts things out with two spiders. There is no buyback on Dark Willow. If they can steal this Roshan from Tundra, this is going to be big. It seems like Tundra's not going to contest it. They feel like they need Dark Willow to take this fight. One of the major differences from Game 1 to Game 2 is OG getting this Aegis into their hands. So we'll see what they could do with it. Is uh, it, It's looking free for them with everybody off and over towards the bottom of the map. So Yoragi will get that Aegis. Meanwhile, snaking over mid freezing field to cut the creep wave, sure. Farming efficiency, trying to get into four staff. See the numbers on the hero damage, and BZM really racking up some numbers at almost 20,000. Gets punched one, he's gonna respect it. How many double damages have we had this game? I think this is a fourth one. How many uh, have gone to each side would be an interesting stat as well. This one's gonna be bottled up for BZM. Here's the Blink Dagger that you were asking for for the Tusk, too. It's going to be a way for them to start a fight. Soxa also picked up a Blink Dagger. I don't think you want to Blink in as Dark Willow. It's going to get you out of the trouble in some situations. And uh, in a situation like this, Blink out. So the start to the pressure on the top tier two. Their bottom tier two was taken. So evening up the map if they could grab this. Get a quick pause from 33 on the Broodmother. So where the game stands right now, obviously a net worth lead. You can see it. It's 3K for Tundra. What's the, Do you what's think the that OG is, be fine. is in the vicinity? Are they close? Does it feel 50-50 to you? It, it looks close. I started to talk about the matchup, uh, Drow Ranger against Ursa. This one can go... Both ways. If you can kite and draw ranger, especially with ages, uh, she's gonna be more than fine. Does have a pike and building into 
relatively quick butterfly, so Ursa will be forced to get MKB, which is an item that uh, he's okay buying with, but uh, you know doesn't want to buy it. He would prefer if it's a, if it's a basher, but uh, might still think about getting a MKB just to be able to pierce through that evasion. Because if you, your BKB is down, you get the gusted. And a very interesting choice that we didn't point out by Drow Ranger is level 10 talent, 15% gust self movement speed. So she wants to be able to run away, use that gust to maneuver, position herself better in a team fight. Uh, so we'll see how that 15% ends up playing out as these fights go on. And you know they've got three and a half minutes to use this Aegis. Meanwhile, Skitter also picking up a Blink Dagger. A lot of Blinks in this game, and uh, Blinking, you'll miss it, as they've all been picked up pretty much in line with each other. They take the Tier 2 up in the top lane, and then a smoke right off that for both teams. So Skidder's got that Blink Dagger. He's going to be trying to jump in, but they're working with an okay, Aegis on the side of OG. They'll find themselves Taiga, and it's three shots to death. They're going to look for more, though. Bramble Maze, Walrus Punch coming in. Yuragi needs to be careful. The Hurricane Pike push away, and the Bedlam damage right on top of this Drow to take out the Aegis. DM's going to be up oh, on the high ground, and now right Misha now. with a Sharpshooter. Well, 33 is right on top of him. The Terrorize hits both these heroes with a Freezing Field drop by Snake King. They get the kill on Yuragi. They're going to look over at DM, and they finish off Misha. Three heroes dead on the side of OG as they're still trying to run on the rest. DM over in the mid lane. That's going to reflect with the Lotus Orb. So the Snowball going back towards 9. Almost getting the damage to get the kill, but Skidder's going to be the finisher on DM. So they lose 4. Tundra. They don't lose anything, and that is a perfect fright from them again. I like how aggressive Tundra is. Even with that Aegis, they still move so quickly. Skitter, Skitter finds uh, Elder Titan immediately, and OG not ready to fall back because Saxa was ready there with the Bramble Maze and another well-placed Terrorize on top of the Aegis. There was already Hurricane Pike used, so nothing he can do to get out of the trouble. And also Hex just being purchased by Broodmother. This is a big pickup. So we'll see it again. You can see the Bramble Maze has had, had already picked up Yuragi by the time Look they got Look how that he kill split the map with the Bramble Maze. They couldn't get through the Bramble, so they needed to try to fight around it. DM, he gets in, but uh, yeah, he's uh, tanky enough to sustain through some of the damage, but this fight's already over here. And then off your screen, you're seeing 33 now uh, go after Misha. So he doesn't have to be in that big cluster of an exchange up on the high ground. He can literally just go for the heroes that are on the outliers, and that's Misha at the moment. So, Curse Crown, Yuragi, ooh, Bedlam, solo target. Already He's gonna be used. right on top of this Drow, and Misha with a Bushwhack, which lines him up for the Sharpshooter. Soxa ends up going in a little bit too far, and they get the kill in the Dark Willow. So, they save the Drow, they get themselves one, and it's off the back of Misha landing a couple of spells. It was a good try from Dark Willow there. Potentially a solo kill, definitely worth it. Tundra's getting so much out of the map. Walrus Punch. Oh, gosh, Misha. Starting to get some Deso charges. Yeah, that was a thousand damage. Walrus Punch. And while that's going on, Taiga mid drops the Skitter. They're going to try and maybe have DM go in, but the, he doesn't have anything really around him to, to be confident just yet. Finally, the team's coming over. But by this point, 33, he's back in the high ground. Skitter, I think, is in a good enough spot where he can defend it what OG bring his way. But if they do it the right way, maybe things work out. So if it's searing chains with BKB, BKB. Bob by BZM, they go up for 33, but Skitter's on the back lines, get to the bash, he's on it. Yuragi, Yuragi in some trouble with the Hurricane Pike. He'll get onto the low ground. They take out this Broodmother, they'll look over at this Ursa. Ursa with the BKB, they get the kill onto Yuragi, and Sansa, he's on the back lines with the Bedlam, looking for the Terrorize. He'll throw it over onto the Timber, so they get the Remnant over to kill off Snake King, but they lose DM. Soxa is just doing amazing things with this Dark Willow. He has his number throughout yeah. the whole game. Like, uh, first he finds him with the Aegis, then he almost gets a solo kill. Now finds him again in a fight. He does not care about this butterfly. All he has is magical damage, and most importantly, Ursa doesn't die there. This first Rosha, Ooh, oh, nine. all that thought. Yeah, sharpshooter, good, good snowball. snowball. But Remnant laid on top, Snowball goes the other way, Sight of Fist again, and They'll get the kill on a nine, so they are still getting some things out of this, but is it enough? 7k gold lead for Tundra. Not able to blink out of uh, 
that snowball. Ember Spirit did pick up a shard, so dealing damage. Didn't have uh, his BKB available yet. Now we're going to see that. Uh, All the way from the start up top. One punch, man. 1,000 damage. Easy. That is uh, the new season of One Punch Man right there. Yeah, it has only one episode. Yeah, that right there. And this is the other part of the fight. BZM with the BKB and watch. Yuragi just gets focused by Skitter here. He does get a good four step, but Sox is in. Blink Dagger again. Bedlam right on top. Nowhere for him to go. And Yuragi can't output the damage. And DM's going to try to move in. But the Terrorize, like, there's just so many great things happening for Tundra. Is now another great thing that's going on for them is Skitter getting a kill on the DM. They look over with the Remnant, side of his Searing Chains, that locks up too. Remnant once again with the BKB being popped by BZM. Earth Splitter's off the mark, and here come Tundra turning this one around. Blink forward with the right clicks on a Tiger as well as BZM, but they're going to hold off for now. They've got the Hex out from 33, out onto the Ember Spirit. Now the Bramble Maze is down, but it's off the mark as well. So they won't be able to hold anybody close as Tiger throws a Sleep out and only sleeps the Dark Willow. They might need to reset Ursa. He doesn't feel too comfortable getting into a fight with uh, no BKB. Next row, Sean might respawn in 40 seconds. His BKB is going to be available. Oh, Arcane Rune. This is big. Nine definitely wants to have BKB before the next fight. Power of Tusk is you one-shot the creep waves. Two abilities, uh, you push out the waves, you have Roche taking potential, BKB piercing ability, you even have Quiver. Ooh, this Ooh, is some big damage. There it is, Soxa dropping. This is what Yuragi hopes to do in these fights, but has been struggling to get off. Two four staffs on two supports on Tundra, gonna help out uh, quite a lot against the spells that OG has. They wanna lock onto a target, but they're not too good at getting because they're not going to feel too comfortable getting on top of someone with their heroes they want to poke from the distance uh, one thing to notice about dark willow and four staff you can't four staff yourself during shadow realm so that's a bit of a downside so you kind of locked into a position there right yeah if you, i mean you have to wait until it's done and then four staff yourself Ooh, long spawn two minutes i think this benefits tundra slightly more because it will give time to farm another... Oh, Ursa already has it. Never mind. MKB's done. Basher's done. Yeah, he wants the Abyssal Blade next. And OG were positioned to take a Roche if it was a short timer, but unfortunate for them that it ends up being the longest one. Two and a half minutes. Now just a minute 50 remaining. But the MK MKB is picked up by Skidder, and now they're going to look over. Sharpshooter being charged up. Do they even want to fight this? I think OG they might be better off just stepping back. Not exactly the initiation that they want. And Skitter's over to the side. They've got the smoke. So Tundra looking to play aggressive, knowing that this Roche is up soon. As they'll take a peek. Nothing in there. Nope. It is uh, not in the pit. So we're going to see that both teams probably spent a lot of their time in this area. Counter smoke from OG. It's a bit too risky to climb uphill straight away, so they're going to go around. They don't have that instant stun, so that's one of the issues. 33, he's going to be able to run away. Yeah, but the BKB's been popped by 9. They go to the Walrus Punch. Lotus Orb popped by DM on himself. And the rest of uh, Tundra, they're out. They'll leave. It was a BKB usage with the Arcane Rune, so he's going to have it again in 50 seconds. All they need to do is kite, reset, and clean uh, here. Look, they can choose where they want to fight There's with Bramble and Ice Shards. Yeah, split via the shards and DM back to the low ground with that Timber Chain. Got the Bushwhack coming in as well as the Sharpshooter. Nine's in some trouble. The he's rooted. That lands out of BCM, so he's feared up. They might be able to get the control off this. The Walrus Punch, the bashes from Skitter on a BZM. They get the trade, and they'll end up losing DM on top of that. So OG, it looked good for a moment until the Terrorize came out and Soxa showed himself. Uh, this is the power of these spells. Bramble Maze and Tusk perfectly placed. Rest of the OG squad cannot enter. They don't have the Blink Dagger, so they can't uh, go across. And Ursa also killed Ember Spirit. He got some big chunk of money in that one. Yeah, off the Terrorize, had the Bash, and then uh, it's easy cooking from there. Got Roche back up, but who can go for it? No 9 for 30, and uh, well, no two heroes for OG completely for 35 seconds. 
So we'll see if Tundra even looked that way. They might even look to get another pickoff and maybe just secure the Roche. And that's oh exactly my what they're God, he almost one-shots him. Yeah, Misha <laughs> in some trouble. Needs to run, run, and get out of there. Taiga, Misha, they're away from the side of Tundra, but Tundra with that, and they push him back far enough, and they're in on Roche. This is the big one. This is the one that Ursa loves to take. Getting that shard, having that enrage, and also having Aegis, so... I'm not sure if they can fight this one. They're gonna try to poke from distance. BZM still thinking about getting in. They do have Elder Titan, however. One of the so, better Roche deterrents. Yeah, so he's gonna try to stop it, but yeah, already damage has been done. 33, he's up on the cliff. Remnant over BZM, he's cliffed himself. Slight of fist, and then a Remnant back onto the low ground, but they've got the Hex coming up from 33. Eon Disc is available, needs back. to unlock 33 it. 33 unlocks the Eon Disc just in time, but the Remnant forward, they're still trying to get the kill here onto the Brood, but here comes Skitter. So the Sharpshooter comes through, BZM's gonna get the kill on a 33. Walrus Punch on a DN, they look for the Terrorize. This time it's gonna land only on a Yoragi, but that's enough. It's the same Getting spot, out same shards. It's a shards. good way to make sure that you're able to escape this fight with the rest of your heroes. BZM with a Slight of fist but no lockdown onto the Ursa. And yeah, similar spot for a fight. This time OG, they get the kill on a 33, but they don't lose anything, which is always a net gain for them, at least at the moment. They got the Aegis, they got the Shard. This is what they came for, OG. Taking out the Outpost, they would definitely want to take a fight. 30 seconds with no Broodmother. Uh, Misha, knocked out. The grand punch from nine. Another double damage, just spawn bottom. <laughs> nine, we'll go for it, see what it is. Oh, thank you. Really, another one. Is that mark like uh, seven, eight, nine? And, and he's not even level 20. Once you hit to that level 20, the extra 75% crit on uh, your ulti. Uh. OG. What do they do from this point? They feel so far behind. That's a good question. They don't have the instant stun, so Thunder will be able to get their BKBs off. Double four staff that we mentioned, also a snowball save. So very difficult to take a fight. They need to poke from distance. Uh, there is Gleipner that was finished on Ember Spirit. So that's going to be another way of poking. Then Drow Ranger, Sharpshooter, multiple instances of Sleight of Fist, the ET with the Stomps. They can't just commit. They need to poke, let them use their BKBs, proc the Eon Disc, then take a fight. Done. 33. Another Eon Disc's available. Takes a lot of patience for them to poke and prod and get these Aeon Discs, these BKBs, out of the hands of Tundra before they really go back in and reinitiate. The chase is on Amisha as well as Taiga. They need to be careful with the rest of the team coming over. Nine's ready to just blink in and go. Swipe from BZM and uh, Skeeter's ready to go. Blind. They've got the Glate near. It's going to be on a Skeeter. He's away from his team by just a, a foot or so, but now 33 on the high ground. And that's, that's the positive. They get the Aeon Disc out of his hand. If he... Pop the Guardian Greaves, the Undisc would not proc, but uh, look at the shards that Nine has been placing. Even the ones that, uh, like, they don't get anything out of it, it still blocks the entrance through the ramp, and uh, he knows pretty much every single spot where he needs to place them so that it blocks, and then they can choose how to approach a fight. So The only, uh, sorry, the only stun that they had was this bushwhack, right. and they missed it on 33. Even if he hits it there, maybe Eon Disc procs. I don't think they're going to be able to get the kill. rest of the Tundra was already in vicinity, ready to connect with him. Yeah, it feels like uh, where there's one, there's five. Or, well, in the sense of 33, where there's one, there's 33. Maybe, I, I mean, maybe a, a, a bit too much for OG to handle. But like you said, they're, they're trying to find their moments. They're trying to find openings, and it's very tough, especially with an Aegis in the hands of Tundra. I, I just don't think you're killing Skitter twice, let alone once in the moment. Yeah, they haven't killed him in a long, long time. We are talking about 30 minutes. Now, 8, 1, and 4. Socks are coming in with Bramble Maze. Now the Curse Crown. Skitter going forward as they've got the Lotus Orb, so that's going to be bounced back, but they've got the Freezing Field. DM being the focus of a lot of the aggression coming up from Tundra, and now BZM can maybe turn it around. They go with the Glade near that stops Skitter in his tracks. They get DM out. And OG, again, they're surviving, but they're not thriving. What a Chad build from Snaking. Double Raid Band after 25 minute mark. He wants to be able to have some extra armor. And Raid Band gives a good chunk of armor against the Drow Ranger and her ulti. Forced to pop the BKB. Yuragi 
on the high ground, but again, now without the BKB and an Aegis in the hands of Tundra, they might be able to push for Roche. Not a lot of time left, though. Tundra definitely wants to take like one smoke engagement, one initiation before going for the high ground. They respect multi-shot from Brown Ranger, Slide of Fist, and Echo Stomp. It's a difficult task to just go and siege the tower. They don't have those heroes. This time around, in the previous one, they had Spectre with the Manta style, Dragonite, Beastmaster, or a Dragonite Manta. Something that, uh, you know, we've seen being very effective in the previous game. Aegis about to expire. Another double damage bottom, come on. <laughs> this is the only rune in the game. I'm convinced. Ah, he's Saxa scouted it out with the courier. That's definitely gonna be like nine or ten, and oh boy, Skitter getting the kill on a BZM with the help from nine. And hits level 25 on Ursa. Three overpowered attacks. Oh boy. This hurts. I think they're showing a little bit of mercy. They're not going for the double damage yet, but I say that as nine is. He's yeah, ready to he, go. He put the bottle back in, uh, and he's gonna go pick it up. So, see what they could do. Yuragi holding onto the ninja gear, so he smoked up himself. They're gonna move over. They know they don't have an Aegis on Skitter anymore, but like I said, it's so hard to kill him just one time. Double damage with this Walrus Punch. Any of these supports are just going to get knocked out immediately. Bramble Maze goes down. Thinking about the Terrorize for a second. They've got the Yules. That's up into the air. They'll look for the Terrorize. It's not going to land, but they've got the Walrus Punch to get the kill on Amisha. They'll take out this Hoodwink with one punch again. Amisha can't catch a break. In the previous game, it was Skeeter on Spectre every single time he shows. Step. Hex dead. This time around, it's a nine. Even Skeeter has his number. Yeah, OG, yeah. they can't leave the base. They can't show up. They're going to need to probably defend this as long as possible, be inside the base. They are still showing some uh, respect going for the high ground. Even getting these pickoffs, getting one or two here or there. Tundra still waiting for uh, the proper moment to go as it's a four-man smoke with Hoodwink dead for three seconds. They know. Scan, I mean, they use the scan. Blink Abyssal, the right clicks from Yuragi doing nothing. This bear feels fine. As Skitter goes in with the BKB, BZM's also popped his own. They get the kill on the Titan, they'll take on the other Titan immediately. He's gonna buy back, but here comes 33. He's got the Hex, it's through into Yuragi. BZM trying to run, they get the Sharpshooter with the right clicks from Yuragi, but still not Skitter, enough. Skitter, thinking they about going in. have the damage at all. They go over onto DM, they get the kill. Skitter with another one, here comes That's the a big Earth AT ulti. But is it enough? Not really. BKB, Snowball in, nine with the Walrus Punch on Yuragi. Right south. Now, Yuragi needs to leave. Taiga trying to help out as the shards are blocking 33 for the moment, but he runs back and escapes with the rest of his team. And it's not really an escape. It's almost just like, all right, well, we'll reset. Tundra is so disciplined, man. It's so fun to watch. They go in, no damage has been done. Immediately falls back to the high ground where Bramble Maze awaits another good uh, Tusk shard. So they, they choose where they want to take a fight. If they don't feel comfortable, they fall back. Let's see the Roche spawn. May respawn in a couple of seconds. Skeeter already knows the timing. Perfect timing inside the Roche pit. Minute and 50 this time around. So a little bit shorter than the last one, but still long timers on these Roches. So with each fight, the net worth lead just continues to expand leaps and bounds away from where OG can have any semblance of control. And, uh, well, they're going to smoke again. They are really desperate to find a fight in their favor, especially one that leads to a potential Aegis. And this is certainly one if they could get the fight, but it just, it, it's so tough. 33 just camped in the pit, waiting for Roche. So we'll see if Tundra force anything at the moment. OG will go to the other side of the map farm while they wait for Roche potentially. Conceding this Aegis just feels like a death sentence. Yeah, because this could potentially be Ags. You give that to Ursa, he's immortal. I think we we've seen this on Reddit, clips, your pubs, wherever. Ursa, once he has, has that uh, 
Shard and Aghanim Scepter, BKB, he's six slotted. Like, it does not get better than this. Oh, you said my pubs, but the Ursa has a BKB, so that's Radiant just uh, not my pubs. Five minute smoke Gaia's from Tundra again. Smokes a plenty from both these teams in the Gaia's last few minutes or so. As Tundra gonna hold high ground. They've been very disciplined, as I said. Getting vision, if Yuragi shows, he's underneath the smoke. Blink in, Socks with the Cursed Crown, but away they go, and four staff back, so Yuragi able to get back into safety. Need to be careful, Walrus Punch and one right click. Misha, you cannot step out that far. Nine with the Walrus Punch, certainly has the damage to kill off both supports, and the four staff again, a saving grace, as there is no way to lock him down when the Echo Stomp misses. And there's Roche. It's going to be a refresher. Good signs for OG. It's not going to be Agonims. Who can they give Ags a refresher to? I don't have the best carriers. Ursa can refresh his uh, BKB for now. Nine is going to hold it. There's also Cheese. Yeah. Now, as we've talked about, nine slotted for nine. Not anymore. He gave cheese to 33. Okay. So, 33. See what he could do. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. He's been uh, pretty clean. 3, 2, and 13. He's been where he's needed. And uh, honestly, everybody here for Tundra has been. And they are just waiting for everybody to group up and get back together. Is Yuragi farming and pushing bottom? He's got that silver edge looking for a shard. So trying to get that upgrade of the Frost Arrows, giving that uh, application of Hypothermia. No space blankets here in Dota, so Hypothermia could be pretty effective. Could be. But the problem is they don't have that much of a lifesteal. They're also not killing anyone on side of Tundra, so no one's going to explode. It was, uh, I think it was would be a good pickoff uh, slightly earlier when... You've seen this Broodmother. It's a great way to deal with these Spiderlings. Oh, he Yuragi. missed it. Well, he probably yeah. needs the BKB TP out. Punch. Oh. oh. Close. And he showed himself with that gust on the, on the Dark Willow. A little bit shocking. They're still just looking for an opportunity. I, I, I mean, I respect it from OG, right? Not just sitting, waiting. There was Yuragi up pushing bottom, and now they're kind of they're playing their way around out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they want to play around this ward that they just placed on the high ground, which is gonna get divorted. They've got the hex. It's on a Yuragi. The chase is on. The spider wings are there. They look for the echo stomp, but the BKB is gonna be popped by 33. Yuragi, he does not have that BKB available for 45 seconds. The four step away. The terrorize is not gonna land. The bushwhack locks up Skeeter for a second, and Yuragi's gonna make it all the way back to the base. Or will it? 33 refreshes here. There's the refresher. They're gonna go in for this. They're gonna kill Yuragi. They'll take the drow. 90 seconds. No buyback. BZM's gonna pop the BKB to get away. And Tundra. Well, they finally get their hands around Yuragi, get the kill, and take him out. No buyback. Well, what do you do if you're OG at this point? It, it looks like wait for it all to come crumbling down. Tusk ready to go in. Punch. Walrus punch. All the way through with the frostbite on to BZM. There is Skitter nearby as well. BZM punch with again. The snowball. They've got the Walrus punch one more time. They get the kill on a BZM and no buyback there either. He's level 25. 12% chance on Walrus punch with the attack speed coming up from the Moon Shard. More than enough. And as you said, no buyback on Ember Spirit. Needs 400 gold for it. And now it's time for Tundra to siege. Yeah, so the siege is going to be way easier. <laughs> Certainly gets easier even more when you've got the one-punch knockout power of nine. Just uh, charged up. Is that a face tattoo I see on that tusk? It's got that knockout power. <laughs> He's been uh, pretty impressive. Did not have that uh, good of a laning stage. Buybacks are coming out to Misha with the buyback, but at this point, uh, it seems uh, all desperation because you step too far away from your own base, from the safety, and they're gonna go on you. Look at 33. <laughs> yeah, no no real fear, honestly, and uh, there shouldn't be. They'll go for the racks, the sharpshooter's out. The Walrus Punch again, one punch, one KO. 
Nine. He's going to be dominating. They're going to go to the snowball all the way over with the shark. Oh. Knockout power, 12%, and keeps just uppercutting them. They'll take out Yaragi. They'll call GG, and it's a 2-0 for the, the reigning TI champs of Tundra as they take out OG. Is this MMA or is this Dota? I mean, he just punched them out of the game. <laughs> Good start for Tundra, this DP.